Welcome and welcome back to another League's 5 area deep dive. Today we've got the Desert, which is probably the best range pick out of all of the areas, but <laughs> let's jump into it. What does the Desert have to offer us? In the early game, you're going to start picking up some shops in Alcarid and actually even into the later game. Something that was super, super good last year was the gem stalls. And this was because one of the changes that came to leagues was making the shop stock essentially infinite. So there was a meta that developed around the Alcarid gem stall for people just working their way up to 99 crafting. Didn't even matter the relic. Now there is also some other nice things that come in Alcarid for crafting. You've got the crafting supply shop as well as a hide tanner. So that can just make getting your dehyde together a little bit easier. There is also Ali Morrisane. Now it does take a little bit of questing, a little bit of mini questing in order to get his shop really up to snuff. But once you do, he will be a really good ruin shop. And he also has some blackjacks if you end up going that route for thieving. Then there's the Shanty Pass. Not like the most interesting shop, but it does have bronze bars, which can be really helpful for early smithing and even early fletching training once you get access to darts. Moving down to Narda, we've got a hunter shop. This probably won't be the most useful for people just because you already get box traps in the starting area. But if you need some of the other hunting supplies, then this is a good place to go. You've got the armor shop. Uh, most of the stuff here is sold in other shops that you'll have access to in the starter area. So again, probably not going to be super impactful for most people, but it is here if you want it. And then we come to the herb lore services. Uh, you've got the guy who can grind things up for you, and you've got the lady who can clean your herbs for you if you meet the diary requirement. So both of those can help in just speeding up the herb lore process, especially later on once you've kind of like grinded through some mobs, some bosses, and you've got those big stacks of uncleaned herbs and other supplies. Moving on, we have the skilling options. Now, historically, thieving has been a really strong part of the desert with things like Pyramid Plunder, the Sorcerer's Garden for the Squirk Juice, as well as Bandits for Blackjacking. Now, that said, there have been a lot of updates and changes to thieving in general. So while it is still strong in the desert, you have a lot of good options elsewhere. And especially if they put a similar relic like they did last year that let you auto pickpocket things. So bear that in mind. Then we've got the Giant's Foundry, which is really good for smithing and actually pretty decent for GP as well. You'll get access to magic trees near the magic training arena, which we'll circle back to in a second. You've got the sandstone rocks as well, which is one of the best mining training methods if you want to click a lot. <laughs> if you want an AFK method, maybe don't do this. And then there is agility. You got the agility pyramid, which can be good for some early GP and then you're getting access to the Alcarid rooftop course as well as the Paul Nivniche rooftop course. Next we've got the Guardians of the Rift. So if you are looking for a good rune crafting training method, you've got this available to you. It does have some rewards. They probably won't be super impactful for you in the leagues just because it's so easy to get all of the resources and things. But with the outfit, Abyssal Pouch, it can just help things along a little bit in rune crafting if that's something that you're needing. Last but certainly not least, we have Temporos. And while you have good fishing and cooking options in the starter area, this can be a nice change of pace as well as giving you access to any of its special drops of so things like the Dragon Harpoon or the Tome of Water. So if you want to do some sort of fancy normal spell mage build, you know, maybe that's an item that you're looking towards. Now, in terms of the mobs and activities, the desert is a little bit barren, <laughs> which I guess is expected for a desert, right? You do have the mage training arena that can be good for your magic training and with the rework on all of the different mage equipment, infinity robes and the magic book are actually going to be useful this time around. They give magic percent damage bonus, so it is worth going for the amount of like there's been some changes to the magic training arena as well to make it a little bit nicer to go through so that coupled with the fact that you get boosted points the more relics you have unlocked in leagues means that you won't have to spend that much time here getting infinity robes i still don't think it'll be that quick i mean expect at least a couple of hours to unlock a full set of robes, but it's not going to be nearly as bad as, say, like the main game would be. The actual mobs that you have access to in the desert, they don't really change that much. There's nothing crazy. 
you do get the different Scarabite Warriors, which they have decent drop tables if that's something that you wanted to train up on. The other notable one in this bunch would be the Dust Devils, not necessarily because it has a tiny chance to drop a Dragon Chain body, but because it's a fairly high level Slayer mob and you can also burst it or barrage it with Ancient Magics, which you're getting access to here in the desert. You know, probably a big reason why a lot of people take the desert. So it can be helpful for Slayer just because you're getting a really good task. And it, if you're looking for the area where you can actually barrage them, it's gonna be in the smoke dungeon. There's a little extended part of that dungeon. It is Slayer only. Now, the last thing on here that I wanna call out is the statue in Narda. In leagues, it is difficult to find things that will reset your stats just because to make everything in the player own house, you essentially have to go Fremnik. So if you don't end up picking that region, you can really struggle to find a place where you can like easily reset your stats. And this statue is super good for that, especially because if you do the Elite Desert Diary, which you probably will be doing anyway for some tasks, you'll get the necklace, which lets you teleport directly to it. And when you couple that with Last Recall, it suddenly makes killing any sort of like standalone boss significantly easier. I use Used this a lot when I was killing the Abyssal Sire in the last league, but you can use it pretty much anywhere, like any of the God Wars bosses, Desert Treasure 2 bosses. I mean, really anything that isn't essentially like a raid or an instanced boss, this can be extremely helpful. In terms of the bosses that you're gonna have access to, the Leviathan is in Mistlin and requires the desert, so that is now gonna be opened up to you. And then you've got the Tombs of a Mascot, which, you know, big bad raid, Everybody loves this one. Probably very familiar with the drops. Now, one thing that they're changing with the raids is all of the raids are gonna drop the three big mega rare weapons. So the Tumican Shadow, the Twisted Bow, and the Scythe of Vitter will all be available from all of the raids. So Tombs is really gonna benefit from this by getting the Twisted Bow on top of the Shadow. We'll circle back to what the gear looks like in a minute, but just bear that in mind that it is really gonna help kind of balance out any of the raid regions. The other thing that we know is the Calphite Queen is going to be the Echo Boss for this region. It's going to be empowered, have some special mechanics. So alongside of its normal drops, it is also going to drop some sort of super good best in slot competing range weapon. So let's talk gear. The melee gear in this area, there's not like a ton that you're going to get access to. You do pick up the Karis Partisan as part of the desert quest line. You can get the empowered versions of it as well by going through the tombs of a Mascot. So that can be a nice weapon to use. You've got the Dragon Two-Hander from Calphite Queen. And then kind of in the later game section, you've got all of the different weapons that would come from like the Raid or the Leviathans. You've got the Scythe, you've got the Fang, you've got the Soul Reaper Axe as well. Those are probably going to be your staples if you're melee and this is the only region that you had. <laughs> Good thing it won't be, you get two more picks. Also, just as a quick shout out, you are going to have access to the HP Cape in this region. So if you couple that with the Onyx Bracelet, the Regen Bracelet, plus the combat masteries and the relics, you may be able to do some cool things with HP regen. So that's certainly something that you can explore. And then, you know, you'll have the light bearer as well. The ring of shadows comes because you'll get the quest unlocked uh, when you take the area. So uh, there's a couple of little upgrades, but I don't think you're picking the desert specifically for melee. Ranged on the other hand, and this is why I think it is the singular best range region out of all of the regions there are. Not only early on do you get the Hide Tanner, which means getting some of that early armor is just a little bit easier, but Tombs of a Masket drops Missouri, which is the best in slot range armor, and it now drops the Twisted Bow, and the Calphite Queen is gonna get some sort of big bad super range weapon, you know? So like all of this stuff together, if you had to pick one region for range, I think this is gonna be the best one. Now, I know folks weren't super thrilled with the inclusion of things that are in other areas, but with what I've got down here, this is stuff that equipment that you get in the desert or related to the desert combines with other areas. And so this is more of like food for thought. I will be doing a dedicated video or two about different region combinations as we get a little bit closer to the league's start date. But for now, this is just some stuff to think about. So the Leviathan is going to drop the, the sort of like add 
add-on to create the range ring. So if you do end up going the Fremnik area, just keep in mind that you'll be able to create the that empowered range ring. As well as Missouri's, in order to empower it, you have to combine it with Armadil armor. So if you do end up wanting to do that, Asgarnia is going to be required in order for you to get that. Now, I know it's hype on the range gear, but for Mage, this area is also quite good. I've got the imbued heart up here because with the introduction of Dust Devils, you're actually going to have a really good Slayer task since it's kind of higher level that increases your chance of being able to get an imbued heart. Plus the fact that you've now got Ancients, so you'll be able to burst that task down. I think it's really ramping up your potential for getting that item. Not to mention whether it's early or late, you're able to get Infinity Robes. So this is going to be a major upgrade compared to what you had available to you in the starter area. And then when you start looking into the later game, you'll get Virtus Robes through the Leviathan. And then the stuff that comes from Tombs of a Masket is also really good. So obviously you've got the Tumican Shadows like your main mage weapon. But if you end up doing something a little bit different, you also do have the magic shield that comes from here. Plus you also get the upgraded Ruin Pouch. Now in terms of how some of this stuff shakes out into other areas, Infinity Boots can be upgraded if you have Asgarnia. That one is not like a huge shift. I would not make that choice just by itself. Kind of the same deal. You get the Shadow Quartz from the Leviathan. So if you really wanted the upgraded ancient staff with the shadow quartz, you could. It's not good, <laughs> but at least if you pick the Fremnic area, that would also give you access to the, the empowered ice one as well as the mage ring, since everything that you need for the mage ring is included in the Fremnic area. The master wand upgrades into the Kodai wand. It'd be a little unfortunate if you're picking up two raids. I think that's going to be a lot of time devoted to try and get those together. So I don't know, again, that I would necessarily recommend that as a pick, but if you do end up going that way, not only would you get the Kodai, but you would also get access to augury and the last thing here is the shield upgrade now since the tumican shadow is two-handed again the shield is not that useful but if you're doing something different maybe you've got a one-handed staff that you're going for and you want to upgrade the shield then you can pick the wilderness uh, this shield is upgraded through the related magic shield that the corporeal beast drops and if you do take the wilderness you'll obviously get the mage cape as well so again just food for thought on those i mean the desert by itself just for these mage upgrades is going to be quite good. Now here is what the tasks are looking like. From last year we've got that spread 20 easy, 39 medium, 40 hard, 21 elite, 5 master. And in terms of the bigger tasks that you're going to have to tackle, you're going to have kill counts on things like TOA, the Leviathan, probably even the Calphite Queen because it's empowered, along with all of the combat achievements that relate to all of these different things. On the skilling side, you have things like clearing the last pyramid plunder room a number of times, smithing a certain number of high level darts, so like ruined dragon darts, and then you're also going to have the squirk juice. Just as a quick side note for that, if you're going to do Sorcerer's Garden for those tasks or the XP, I'd recommend doing it early on. There tends to be a lot more people in the desert early Early, which is going to make that task a lot easier. I made the mistake last year of doing it late into the season and there's basically nobody there. So unless you're really good at running the Sorcerer's Garden, kind of a pain in the butt. And then obviously with all the different equipment upgrades, you can bet that there's going to be tasks for equipping all of those different things. And that'll be both individual pieces as well as full sets. So you might see stuff like equip one piece of Infinity Robes, equip the full set of Infinity Robes, equip one piece of Missouri, equip the full Missouri set, equip the all of the different weapons. So like the Shadow, the Fang, everything like that. All of those are probably probably going to have its own task. I am going to be doing some other area deep dives as well as videos like talking about the best combination of areas as we get a little bit closer to the league. So if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe. A few of you were also asking about putting together a Discord channel. So we've got that. If you want to join, you'll find the link in the description. And I will be streaming at the start of leagues. I'm going to start early in the morning, probably before league starts. So 9 a.m. Central on the 27th. We'll just hang out, kind of talk different strategy stuff, figure out the plans. And then once leagues kicks off, we will just go straight into that. So that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next one.